There we go. Thank you for staying with us this far. This still remains to be Good Morning Kenya. In case you are just joining us, Karibu Tenasana. We appreciate that you have chosen to continue with us right here. My name is Jen Mamboy. Remember, our communication platforms ever remain open. The hashtag you can use on Twitter is Good Morning Kenya. Our official station handles across Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is at KBC Channel 1. My handle is at Jane Wamboy. Now, right now, we want to get into our family check segment. And as always, Matters Family take precedence in this particular discussion. And today, it is going to be a sensitive matter. And this is all about sexual and gender-based violence. And to help us with this discussion, we have two fantastic ladies with us in studio. I'll start with the lady to my extreme right. She is Honorable Dr. Lina J.B. Kilimo, who is the CAS under the Ministry of Public Service and Gender. Good morning, Dr. Terry. Good morning, Jane, and good morning, Kenya. Thank you so much for making time <laughs> to be with us today. Thank you. And to my immediate right, we have Fanis Lisiagali, who is the Executive Director at Health Assistance Kenya. Good morning, Fanis. Good morning, homeboy. Thank you so much for making time to be with us yeah, today. Yeah, thank you too for having me. Karibu sana. Thank you. Now, this discussion we understand is quite sensitive and for the purposes of this session it is meant to be informative and not discriminative in any shape manner or form so we do advise you that there might be some triggering words but viewer discretion is advised as we venture into this informative session now let me start with you dr lena you know for the benefit of our viewer once again maybe we could start by understanding the mandate of the ministry when it comes to uh, public service and agenda uh, thank you very much. Uh, Minister of Public Service and Gender, uh, I think about two weeks ago we were added uh, another mandate, yes. that one of uh, State Department of Social Protection mm -hmm. and the State Department of Arid and Semi-Arid uh, Lands. Mm -hmm. And uh, our mandate, of course, as a ministry is wide. Uh, I want to be specific to where I have been uh, demo, de, domiciled now, yes. the State Department of Gender Affairs. And at the State Department of Gender Affairs, we coordinate and uh, oversee the implementation of the policies in our country, mm. which, are not, which are supposed to be uh, all-inclusive, no discriminatory, yes. uh, no violence, and of course uh, empowerment uh, of of women mm. women in peace and security everything gender equity mm. gender equality is under the state department uh, of gender so basically this is what i do yes. i i oversee the implementation of of these policies on behalf of my cabinet secretary mm. professor margaret cobia as at or, or when she delegates to me fantastic thank you that, we don't need to add anything <laughs> to that now let me come to you fanny you know the healthcare assistance kenya some might not understand even what it does so let's just start by understanding what this organization and entity does very briefly great yeah healthcare assistance kenya is an organization within the state department for gender mm. which is of course again within ministry of public service yes uh, and gender so uh, we're working in partnership uh, with this great ministry. Um, our mandate is to ensure that women, girls, men and boys, those who are suffering sexual and gender-based violence are comfortable, they are protected, they're taken care of. Yes. Yeah, so um, why we came together uh, with the ministry is because we want to eradicate gender-based violence in this country, mm. which is really a big menace. Um, our mandate also ensures that uh, gender-based violence is a thing of the past in this country. Yes. Especially violence that is meted on little children, mm. on women, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using women and little children and even girls eh? because their numbers are enormous they're the ones that are being defiled they're the ones that are being battered they're the ones that are being discriminated harassed either at home or at the place of work yes in public spaces so we've come in with a tool that is um opening up all these issues mm. 
a reporting tool which is a uh, number 1195 yes it's a gbv toll free uh, line uh which kenyans now have really embraced uh they the able women are able to open up mm. to say exactly what is happening to them okay because you Yes. Yeah. Now, let's just take a very small step back and just come back to when we talk about sexual and gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. For some, they might not really understand that some of the um, atrocities that are done unto them actually falls under this category. Yes. So let me come to you, Dr. Lina. When yeah. you talk about sexual and gender-based violence, mm -hmm. what exactly does it encompass? And maybe you could give us some, you know, forms and how it manifests itself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, GBV or gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. Uh, can be both physical, emotional, mm -hmm. and uh, and when we come to emotional, it can be just like how we make you feel. Yes. How we talk, so maybe some language that makes you feel belittled, mm. slander, kind mm -hmm. of, just because of your gender. You know, you can say, Mwanamu mm. Keyule. And you will say, Manam Keyule. You know, mm. there's even just the way you pronounce. The tonation. The tonation of, yeah. of your words is violence in itself uh, and then of course uh, when we say gender based it's because of your gender mm -hmm. either because you're a woman or even even young boys just because of maybe you come from a poor background or you could be orphaned and maybe you're staying with relatives who now feel you are you are already a problem to them you're a burden so even the way they would speak to you the uh, don't uh, what do you call it uh, to the tone of the language mm. is also violence in itself of course the other one now is uh that they're glaring the silent epidemic which is a uh, sexual violence mm. on minors uh, especially girls we know that a few boys also maybe have been sodomized but mostly girls i mean isn't it in the public media in kenya that uh, there was a report about uh, the taboo children Yes. Or vihiga, mm. why taboo? Because there was incest, and it's so sad and that there are so many cases of incest that come about because of the closed environment uh, brought about by COVID. And this, r these uh, numbers, which are so many, over five thousand, mm -hmm. uh, we get from eleven ninety five when they report. But they are the ones which are not even reported. There are many. Mm. Like for example, I think uh, in twenty twenty last year. I think out of the teenage uh, pregnancies that were reported and births in Moranga, for example, t t 10 of them were incest. And when you talk to these girls, they'll tell you, it's for my grandfather, or it is for my uncle, this baby is for my niece, or whatever. I mean, so this is what we call gender-based violence, which is mostly lopsided more to the women and girls than to the men for that. And uh, the other form of violence, of course, is physical. Mm. Uh, physical, uh, especially meted on when you are perceived to be to be weaker. Mm -hmm. We've all seen how people are just killing each other, mm -hmm. and we are telling Kenyans using this platform. I tell Kenyans, and even yesterday where I was, I said, instead of violating somebody physically or something, you are fed up. Could you call 1195 and just say, "Hapa mm. Kamenuka, <laughs> kabisa. <laughs> and then from at 11:95, and they walk throughout. And of course, uh, uh, the ministry, uh, state, the ministry at the State Department of Gender, mm -hmm. we've given them space. Though not adequate, but it is better than nothing. At least they have a place they can stay somewhere, uh, by the uh, supported by the ministry. Yes. So we are telling people call and say, you know, we are almost finishing each other. We will be able to uh, to tell you where to go and counseling we have counselors who will like open up until you realize oh it's not all is lost yes. so there's a place i can go it wasn't all doom yeah, and gloom yes mm -hmm. and uh, as a government mm -hmm. we are under we are reviewing the gender based violence policy of 2014 and in that review we are thinking or putting up uh, safe houses which had already been put there without a policy under uh, the women members of parliament of the county that they should put up safe spaces we are calling them safe and protective spaces yes. where you can run for the night as you recollect your thoughts or for the day as you think what next
and it's not now about just women alone mm -hmm. there are also some men who may not uh, take it up when they are when they could be meeting violence on their wives but without knowing and if their wife feels that she needs to move there's a man who may not be able to take it and most of them kill themselves yes. and we are telling men no usijitie mm. kitanzi there is help because first of all men don't speak out mm. so it boils inside and sometimes it is what causes them to just hit and kill because they never shared out so it was boiling and when it bursts open the nearest person there is their families so, so we are the telling them yeah so don't can you can you as a man call 1195 and say i am depressed yes and i don't know whom to tell my problem mm -hmm. first of all because culturally they are taught not to speak up eh ka ngumu kama mwanaume eh ro ngumu so ro ngumu until it bursts mm. no you can call that number yes. you'll get counselors we talk with you and it's a process counseling is a session so we work with you and they somehow they realize that it's not all doom as uh, they had thought it's not the end of life yeah and uh, and and so w there's a lot of work that is done in the state department of gender under the guidance of our pub our cabinet secretary mm -hmm. madam margaret kobia that although we share we address matters for women she has also gone further to tell us to look also the most vulnerable among the women we consider to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and those are the widows in our country the the invisible women mm. uh in our country okay. uh, and so the other day also to mitigate uh, the challenges that they go and most of the widows undergo a lot of emotional yeah. trauma yeah. uh sometimes it is physical or just perception uh so uh she launched something called Thamini loan mm -hmm. under the women enterprise fund and and so i speak with pride knowing that the uh the issues that our country under the leadership of his excellency has put in place is really more uh to target uh the the the, the software of our country or to it is like we are already down there to ensure the vulnerable are supported to come up so you see like the women enterprise fund mm. we all know about women enterprise fund where women get into groups and get money but now uh, under the direction of our cabinet secretary she has gone further to say we have to look at this invisible women the widows and so we they she launched a thamini loan mm -hmm. where women who are widows can come together and they get uh, money interest free mm. and they are trained so that they c we can all uh, come up together no one should be left behind no one is mm -hmm. left behind mm -hmm. i i love that you know the fact that even by the term invisible women in itself that yeah. speaks volume yes. and it's an actual fact on ground yeah but let me bring you into this conversation funny yeah. looking at the statistics as they may be pre-covid and uh during this pandemic time and you can just narrow it down to maybe um, around march mm -hmm. um in 2020 when the officially declaration of covid happened in the country when it comes to the reporting of these cases how did the numbers shift looking at cases um reported about violence meted against children mm -hmm. women and men for yeah. that matter and boys and boys <laughs> yeah that's a good question one boy let me go back before pre yeah pandemic COVID. yes yeah uh in fact we had targeted ourselves to support about 2000 people mm. to be precise 2200 but from march up to december we supported over 5000 people out of those we got 3000 women and girls violated right mm -hmm. uh 700 women and girls suffered sexual violence we also have what we call psychological torture which actually um which was really on the rise this particular time why because perpetrators were now at home mm. with the with, 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 the, with their wives with yeah. the victims with their children schools have closed survivors are, please they are called survivors not victims not yeah. victims ah uh, we, we <laughs> apologize and withdraw <laughs> yes. yeah. survivors yes. Yes. yes with survivors mm -hmm. yeah before they became survivors they were at home mm. with their perpetrators mm -hmm. who then 
because of arguments in the house, disagreements over either food, there's nothing for children and the guy is not working or the, rather the husband is not working, the wife is not working, they're all there. So out of that argument, you find they're beginning to fight. Mm -hmm. Children begin to fight their parents. So it became, everything became loose. Yes. And that is the reason why we got so many of those cases. Children were left, some were left unattended. So they would go to the neighbors to ask for food. And what happens? D they're defiled, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The ugliest case we got, and this you wouldn't want even to hear, was of a babe, an infant, four days old, by a stepfather, four days. And it was not just that infant, even the brother who was three years old was defiled. The mother stepped out very briefly and it happened within a second. Four days. Yes. We received very ugly cases. And this was the worst moment during this COVID period. And it's still going on. Last night alone, we've received over 200 calls. People asking if it happens to me. Others, it has already happened and they need some uh, telephonic counseling. Mm -hmm. And that is why 1195 number, which is a toll free line, yes. comes in handy for our women and girls. We have a team that is working round the clock, right? So from January, we have handled over 3,000 cases. This is January this year. of this year. This year, right? And you know, it keeps on varying. Yeah. Depends on who is doing what, like what we're here, and we're talking about the helpline. People are already calling. Mm. Kenyans need to be reminded about this great service. Okay. Yesterday, while we got enormous numbers, and our team on night shift really got very exhausted mm -hmm. just because someone went to studio and media did a good job and they publicized the number and we got lots of cases. Yes. So for me, if you ask me, are we about to end GPV? Are these cases coming down? You can see from 2019, we targeted or rather we projected to 1,200 cases. Mm. We ended up getting over 5,000 cases. This year, we still have COVID, and we already have above 3,000 cases up to this morning, mm. which means we are not learning lessons. In as are much we as, in as much as yes, in as much as we are being helped by the public to even report these cases because this is the first people will let us know what is happening yes mm -hmm. and the beauty of the number is now breaking the silence mm -hmm. amongst um, uh, the target groups who then become survivors mm -hmm. they're able to say what is happening you know our culture in this country women never mention what is happening especially when it comes to rape defilement mm -hmm. you know the stigma behind it cannot allow them to talk about it. So they go hide somewhere, then report. But what we are telling Kenyans is, we still have COVID in Kenya, mm. which is very, very active. Yes. We cannot rubbish this to say it's over, right? Um, then we have elections coming mm -hmm. in 2022. That's a whole other factor. That's another whole problem mm. on our hands. We've seen women uh, violated, women voted, voters, uh, women who... Aspirants uh, as, as well. Yes, mm. aspirants. Um, mm. We've seen even women observers being abused, you know, being beaten up. All we're saying is, we have the number, okay. 1195. We are saying no to GBV on women, any, uh, you know, um, uh, this time around. We don't want our women and girls killed we don't want boys sodomized. We've mm -hmm. seen boys sodomized. We already have a case where um, a young boy was sodomized and he can't even sit in class. The rectum was getting rotten because of silence associated with it. Mm -hmm. He could not report what was, and just because they're given mandazi.
Sweet. You know, that yeah. brings me to the perpetrator aspect yeah. in it. So, you know, whenever we have any conversations around gender, mm -hmm. immediately people perceive it as a women issue, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. But let's talk a bit about the perpetrators that are involved in most of the cases that you have seen and the patterns therein. Yeah. Let me start with you, Dr. Lina. Wow. And we are just stating facts as they are. <laughs> yeah, we yes, have to say as yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. You know, when she speaks issues, or it gets emotional because you also get absorbed in mm. imagining what is happening at that particular time. Uh, gender based violence, as you have heard, affects both. It is really meted on both the male gender and the, and the female, female gender. Mm. And uh, the perpetrators, per se, as, uh, depending on if it is psychological. It can also be women yeah. meeting psychological, you know, the way they will talk back mm. to their male counterparts, yeah? And f physical sometimes it can be both, although it is more physical on, on the women. Mm -hmm. But let me say what we've done as a country, as you have also uh, heard when, uh, when they report and there's no place to go. Yes. And uh, I had said that uh, we are reviewing the GBV policy to include safe spaces. At the moment, um, we were grateful for uh, civil society organizations and individuals, churches, who have got safe spaces. Mm. When they report to Fannies, as like the calls you got last night, some of them now don't have anywhere to, to stay. Yeah. And so where do they go? They will be taken to these uh, safe spaces. And this is where I say for all of us Kenyans, I think we also need to talk about GBV, mm. like the way we've been talking about FGM or the way we are talking about female genital mutilation now. Yes. It's also another form of GBV. Mm. Uh, FGM now, our president is, you know, on it to say by 2022 it must end. When we talk about GBV, somehow somebody might realize and say, ah, so what have, the way I've been treating my colleague or my partner is actually it's not actually right. a category of violence. Yeah, it's a category of violence. Mm. So we have to bring to the conscience of Kenyans what is really uh, GBV. Mm. For example, even in the offices, just the fact that a lady walks in and you look at them from head to toe and just say, has anyone ever told you you're beautiful? Mm. That is violence. Yeah. I mean, why are you looking at their skirt? They're just your colleagues. Why don't you treat them the way? Remember that time uh, when uh, we talked about my dress, my choice? Yes. Yeah. Why should you not just look at them as a human being without uh, thinking otherwise, or looking at them as a beautiful woman mm -hmm. or, or a handsome man for that mm. matter. Yeah, just look at them as either as just human beings. So the matters of GBV, uh, which I say our president is in the lead. Absolutely. There is something called Generation Equality Forum mm -hmm. Coalition Action uh, against the GBV. And there are four countries globally who have come out and our president is among them uh, taking the lead to say there should be no violence meted on anybody. But when it comes to uh, sexual violence, as I said, we don't have people reporting. Mm -hmm. You have had cases where even mothers know that their daughters are being violated and, and they, they cannot silent. report. Right. But now, media, we are counting on you and thank God that you've called us here today because we need to talk about I know you've uh, given an exclaimer to say these are things that are a bit personal. Mm -hmm. No, we have to start talking the untalkables so that we can get rid of GBV in our country. And bring so the that change we, can, we want. And, and get the change we want. If yes. we don't talk about it, and uh, confession is possession, we must talk at where we want to go as a country. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am also appealing, using this platform to say that GBV, His Excellency has given his directive that by 2022 we should end. That is one GBV which we can end in a day by just saying, we don't want to take it and wetu and then it ends. And then also men to take their space. Mm. I want to challenge the men of this country. They keep on pointing fingers that we are empowering the girl child. And forgetting the and boy forgetting child. the boy child. Male champions are very important. The male figure is mm. also very, very important. I think we need men to also come up and talk about the boy child mm -hmm. and talk about the men you know men always have a boys club after work you find all the women are running to their homes to make sure that everything is ready on the yes. table and then the men also have their own space for conversation what is it that they speak in this uh, space they have for on, in the men's club is it about how can they build better families mm -hmm. or is it about how i beat my wife 
For example, when it comes to FGM, we know that there are men who force their women to go to and be cut. cut. Mm -hmm. You know of that case of 20 women yes. uh, sometime last year in Kericho. Why? Because the conversation in the men's club was, how is your wife? Uh, yeah. Ajakatwa. Yeah. Or they say now, they say, okay, our boys are in Jandoni, but you know, according to our culture, they go picking um, pieces of culture that we've left behind and mm -hmm. say, no, they Very cannot feed our ones. children. Mm -hmm. For example, they'll say that, oh, you cannot now cook for my son because you are not cut. The same uncut woman was cooking for you, mm, the husband, who was cut. Mm. Why weren't you refusing? Mm. You see? Mm. So uh, we also need to balance uh, between culture and where we are going as a community. And our constitution, Article 11, says, you know, uh, what is uh, culture? It's the accumulation of all the things that we've had through the development, accumulation, mm. what have we accumulated up to here? Mm. Okay. Which I feel one of the things we've ac accumulated, which is not right, is from the social media, somebody's beating somebody. Mm. I mean, we've not been, some of these things, if initially, traditionally, if you beat your wife, there was a traditional way mm. of you that paying rich. for that. Yes. Yeah, you cannot be beating your wife. You must take care, you must provide for your family as a man. But what has happened? And we'll be coming to some of those issues that are still creating the space for yeah. sexual and gender-based violence yeah. to mm. exist in this time and age. Yeah. But let me bring but you But before in. you leave, you saw, yes. I mean, tradition. Remember, mm. they said taboo children, mm. incest in our culture. Was it allowed? So, mm. let us talk about it. We'll be coming to that in Just very to add, briefly. Yeah, yes. to add to what uh, Honorable has said. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we look at men to take the lead in the fight against sexual and gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we can have half of the population of men yeah. saying no beating of a woman, yeah. Yeah? they be the ones to fight this vice. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it will never be taken seriously. Yes. Yeah. If they can be telling us what is happening to the boys, and of course the number is for everybody, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's why we have even statistics on uh, how many boys have been violated, uh, be it um, sexually ab uh, abused, or um, child labor, mm, physical or even violence, physical violence, yes. and, and all that, psychological torture. We have those statistics, mm -hmm. even for men. We've seen cases, we've received cases where men have suffered violence that is unspeakable. Yeah. You know, their genitals being chopped off. Who does that? We want to work on GBV collectively. Yes. Men and women together mm -hmm. for us to end this. Okay. And we say before it gets to that level of harming this man in that manner mm -hmm. or chopping off that woman's breast, these are a mental issue. This is mm -hmm. a psychological issue. Mm -hmm. Call 1195 mm -hmm. before it gets worse. Yeah. Then we can provide counsel. Now, given that we're on this area that focuses on the challenges that we are facing when it comes to the fight of gender-based violence, mm -hmm. there's also been the issue about justice when it comes to mm -hmm. um, solving these cases. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time, and this is something that you can also um, give us more information about, you find where there's a case of uh, incest within the family or yeah. violation within the family, mm -hmm. they don't want to go the legal way. Mm -hmm. They want to sort it out of court or mm -hmm. out of uh, justice yeah. because aibu kwa familia or intaleta lana. How... How can this be addressed in order to help bring this uh, menace to an end because it is now enabling it? Let me hear from you, Doctor. Yeah. Yes, uh, that is still a, a big challenge mm -hmm. uh, where uh, the survivors never get justice when it goes the communal way. And this is the way most people prefer, mm. that let us discuss about it so that we don't expose the family, Kinyumbani. Kinyumbani, uh, you know, yeah. and uh, that is still a big challenge, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, can only be overcome when people take their rightful position as those who are the care, uh, care, caregivers yes. for the perpetrator, mm. for example, to say, no, it's not going to be this way, we want justice uh, for this. Uh, the other challenge is also when our courts will start, uh, you know, giving uh, justice, really. really. Mm. And one of the challenges has been evidence, for example. And so the other day, you know, that we launched something called polycare. 
mm. especially for SGBT, yes, yeah? yes, 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 uh, sexual, yes. Uh, those who are violated sexually, mm. yeah. We tell people you should not, you know, you immediately don't bathe, don't what do to anything, do and what not to just do. go straight to yes. the hospital. Now, it has been sometimes a problem where you're going to the hospital, then you are told go and get yeah, a P3 evidence. form from the police station. Mm. By the time you're going up and down and you don't have that money, the 72 hours will have gone and there'll be no sampling. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is something that we are promoting as a country to say that at least in every county, we must have a uh, SGBV, SGBVRC, Gender Based Violence Recovery Center. Yes where uh, sampling can be done. But before then, we know that through the in Ministry of Interior, because through one government approach, we collaborate together. At the end of the day, mm. the police must also come in. So uh, the, the, we launched the uh, Polycare Center, which will be under one roof. For, for example, now, they, if they called 1195 mm -hmm. and say I have been uh, sexually violated, they will get direction from 1195 mm -hmm. to where the nearest service provider either gbvrc center is based on their location on yes. their location yes. or where there is a polycare center and we really hope that we will have a polycare in every uh, of the 47 counties mm. and this polycare will start from you come in you will get the op there you are reporting at the police station still under one roof mm. you report and then you have a medical person doing your check there over there taking samples everything and then of course then you will be given uh, they call them some paper, something to stop in case you have GBV yeah. or any or pregnancy or to stop pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Then from there you will have uh, the, uh, a lawyer, an advocate there, so you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to move from yes. this place to that place yes. to that place, yeah. all under one yeah. roof. Yeah. All under one, under one roof. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I yeah. just, yes, yes, yeah, we I are just uh, to yeah. say? Yeah. You know, I need Kenyans to know this. Mm. In all the 47 counties, yeah. that it's not just about reporting, mm. yeah. okay? It is about being directed to where you can get services. Mm. And it is about protection for your health. Especially those people who keep quiet. Mm. They don't want to report, they don't want to seek services. They don't know the dangers, you know, of a child or a woman suffering sexual violence. It comes with certain consequences, mm -hmm. sicknesses, infections, sexually transmitted diseases. Mm -hmm. When they keep quiet, really they're not helping that, puppy, that, that uh, survivor. It's actually mm -hmm. enabling. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. HIV and AIDS. 90% mm -hmm. of the people we support, having been, uh, having been uh, sexually abused, yes. they're found to be HIV, HIV positive. positive. But if they come, um, right on time, definitely their lives will be saved. Preventative it? measures. Yes, can be that's taken. the reason we, we are saying they must break the silence. Mm -hmm. As and when it happens, it should not become an, a, a family thing, mm -hmm. you know? That in year two, tutamaliza nyumbani, alikuwa babaka limbaka. Because even fathers. Ilikuwa tu makosa. Ilikuwa makosa. Eh? Baba naweza kubakaje mtoto wake ikuwe tu makosa. Si amekuwa kifikiria? Mm -hmm. Uncle at a fire at a back and forth. It is some things this person has actually been thinking about for a very yeah. long time. But now to save the life of this child, maybe this one, we've even seen, uh, we've even received cases of persons living with disability mm. having been violated in that manner, sexually abused. We've seen uh, cases of very old women. The elderly. Mm -hmm. Just like this raped, weekend, actually, there was a case. Raped by their grandsons. Children, yes. Yeah. And that's why we're saying this must end. Just go. You know, is, and still this belief of saying that uh, if you are HIV positive as mm. a man mm. and you rape a virgin, a virgin, you know, you get hit. Yeah. That you defile a you child. You defile a child. And this brings me to this whole aspect of, you know, even from what you have seen, the patterns, mm. what are these probable areas that, you know, or environments that have also allowed for gender based violence to actually um, occur? Mm. In what environments have they been mm -hmm. happening most? We've, we've uh, especially here in Nairobi, of course Nairobi is leading, mm -hmm. you know, the statistics are, are too high. Yeah. Um, we, uh, and most of these cases come from the slums. Mm -hmm. And I thank the, the, those people in the slums because they're able to speak out. 
Point of order yeah. again, you said here yeah, we are going to use the correct languages. Yes. Informal settlements. Informal yes. settlements. Yes. Informal settlements. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, okay, fine. Yes. <laughs> yes, informal settlements. Yes. yes. At least they're able to speak out. You know, they're able to say exactly what has happened. And I, I think it's because, again, they're exposed to information. Mm. You know, they have TVs, they're on social media and all, and all that. They mm -hmm. have the numbers. Um, there's a lot of, uh, um, uh, we have a lot of GBV activities taking mm. places in those the areas. The information is flowing. So the information flows easily and therefore they're able to uh, Respond report. Respond and act yes. accordingly. Yes. Um, I want to also say about counties that are not even reporting. Mm -hmm. Nomadic counties are not reporting yeah. these cases. Masla. We have yes, we have a lot of uh, FGM uh, issues that mm -hmm. are going, taking place: female genital mutilation, mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. but they are not reporting. Yeah, sometimes we see it even from media, you know, but they don't report to eleven ninety-five. Yet the number is free. Um, the, the, the other areas where now uh, the drought-stricken uh, counties, mm -hmm. uh, they're about, uh, I think, 10 or 12, the numbers, so, uh, the numbers are so low, uh, especially this time when uh, distribution of food is going on. Mm. You find a few calling to say, uh, I was violated because of food, mm -hmm. yeah, so that yeah. I can be given. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. But we are saying, I mean, if something happens like that, yeah. they should just need report. To report. Yeah. Now, due to the interest report. of time, mm -hmm. let us just quickly um, talk a bit about the hotline in itself. Mm -hmm. um, how many hours a day does it operate for the benefit of our viewers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is round the clock. Yes. 24 hours, seven days a week. Yes. We are on, awake for Kenyans. Through and through. Through and through yes. and the number is free right we have uh, uh, we have partners who are also supporting the helpline mm -hmm. to say Kenyans call for free okay mobile service providers yeah call for free we are we all coming together to make sure that uh, we, we, we eradicate GBV okay so the partnerships are really helping when they go to hospital of course they are also uh, uh, receiving uh, treatment mm. for free so it's up to them to just call it's up to you to just exactly reach out. yeah uh, when they call the first service they get is from helpline 1195 we, we are popularly known as hack gbv 1195 mm. because everyone cannot pronounce health care assistance kenya yeah so um when they call the given council mm -hmm. then we assess the case uh, get to understand which one is more serious, warrants maybe um, an ambulance, mm -hmm. then we have partners who will provide like Kenya Red Cross, MSF France, um, our hospitals across the country, uh, we have Nairobi Women's Hospital. We have strong partnerships who make sure that this survivor accesses quick GBV services fantastic right yes um we also have our police yeah the national yeah. police service mm -hmm. you know for protection mm -hmm. and uh, making sure that uh, those cases uh, go through prosecution yes yeah uh, make sure that uh, perpetrators pay for it for, mm -hmm. for, for for their crimes mm -hmm. right okay uh, and at our place we don't just stop at receiving that call uh, the time it came, mm -hmm. we make follow-ups. We tell survivors, you've gotten to the doctor, yes. doctor's place, make a free call to us. We are the ones again starting the story, mm -hmm. narrating the story to the doctor because if you are raped or defiled, you wouldn't Trauma. want to keep repeating and you know narrating the story again. And we are telling the doctor uh, at the casualty or whoever is attending to them, that client is not supposed to sit because they feel traumatized mm -hmm. and intimidated and uh, they're, they're scared, harassed, they just want to run away. Okay. They're not comfortable. All right. So we tell them, take them to a place where they can be comfortable. That is how we do it. Okay. And we follow them at home because some of them, they're not accepted but by their families. They're excommunicated say, right from the home. This is not acceptable. You are raped. Where were you going? What were you doing? And all those Victim questions. Victim shaming comes So they go play. again committing suicide. So we follow them up to say, you're back home. 
are your people there? Mm -hmm. We want to talk even to the chief to say this person is, is, has come back from hospital. Is the perpetrator still there? Because some go, uh, some yes are apprehended, but they are released on bond. Okay. So they get very scared. So we make sure they are safe wherever They're they are. All right. Yeah. Now, due to the interest of time, this is a conversation that we cannot exhaust in this one sitting, mm -hmm. and we do hope for subsequent conversations. But as we close, maybe, uh, Doctor, you could give us your quick remarks. You know, we know you're very passionate when it comes to ending um, FGM and everything uh, when it comes to peace. So maybe what would be your closing remarks to our viewers when it comes to coming together to end sexual and gender-based violence? Balance. Very briefly, there's your camera. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to call on Kenyans to be each other's keepers. Let us be our brother's keepers. The government has given the laws, the policies to give us direction on how we should relate to one another. It is us to implement. I thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you once again, uh, Honorable Dr. Lina Jebekilemo, CAS Ministry of Public Service and Gender, as well as Fanes Lisia Gali, who is the Executive Director at Health Assistance Kenya. The toll number is running here on the bottom of our screen. If you know someone who needs assistance or they are not able to do so, kindly go ahead. 1195 is a toll-free number. Report any sexual or gender-based violence cases that you may come in contact with. For now, have a lovely day. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing. I'm General Boy. Bye-bye.